Hi, Micro Puncher here, and uh, today I want to respond uh, to one of the questions of my viewers uh, that I received this time. I received it over email, and the question is the following Does the eyepiece objective combination of a microscope does this make a difference if the magnification is the same? So, for example, this here is an, IP, uh, an eyepiece that magnifies 10 times, uh, an objective that magnifies 40 times, total magnification is 10 times 40 is 400 times. Okay, when you look through it. And um, if you now use a different combination of uh, objective and uh, eyepiece, and if the magnification is the same, does it make a difference? So for example, if I were to use a, um, an objective uh, which, which has a magnification of four times and then a 100 times magnifying eyepiece. Now, they don't exist, but I actually made one. Look here, 25 uh, times uh, eyepiece times two times bar law and again two times so the total magnification of this eyepiece here is, is uh, 100 times so 100 times uh, 4 um, also gives you 400 times um, and the question is now does it make a difference um, and as a matter of fact it makes an imp a huge difference um, and uh, I'm going to do now the following I'm just going to show you uh, using a video um, how what the difference is um, and we're just looking at some bacteria because uh, they are in high contrast so that's uh, easy to see then and then later on I'm gonna also explain to you a little bit uh, the theoretical background okay so now I'm just gonna show you the video here I'm now using a four times objective and the 100 times Barlow eyepiece combination I'm focusing and I'm still not able to get a sharp image and just uh, ignore the dust for right now. But I think it is very clear that uh, this is not a satisfactory image quality. Now let's uh, switch uh, objectives uh, to the 40 times uh, objective and to a 10 times eyepiece. The magnification is the same, uh, it's uh, 400 times, but the image is much uh, clearer right now and uh, much more rich in detail. So okay, so now uh, I think uh, this made it quite clear that uh, there is a huge difference and now the question is, is why is this the case? Um, so uh, what is important is, is you have to look at the so-called numerical aperture of the objective and uh, this is the value which is printed uh, here, in this case next to the magnification. The, I'm just going to explain you also the other values. This says 160, that's the mechanical tube length. It's basically how far away the eyepiece is located from the um, objective. That's a physical, um, yeah, standard 0.17 that is the thickness um, of the cover glass uh, that you're supposed to use then of course the 40 times magnification and then there's a value in here it's 0.65 and that is the numerical aperture and it is this numerical aperture that determines uh, the resolution and uh, here it's a 0.65 and uh, here um, it's a 0 0.1 in the four times objective. And uh, because the value is higher here, this means that this uh, objective is able to have a higher resolution. Um, and uh, the formula that um, re relates uh, resolution and wavelength and the numerical aperture was discovered by Ernst Abe. And I've got actually a little board here that kind of illustrates, it's kind of big, I think. It's a little bit too big maybe. Uh, but that is the formula here. Um, so D is uh, the resolution, that's uh, the distance uh, between uh, that can still be resolved. Um, and uh, the formula is actually quite simple. You have the wavelength of the light. Um, it, uh, of course, white light is a mixture of different wavelengths. Uh, so the resolution is, of course, different for different colors. Um, but uh, let's say we put in 500 nanometers or something like that, and then two times the numerical aperture. Um, and that is uh, the value on, on the objective. And then you see that the longer the wavelength here, okay, the less the resolution, okay, and, and the shorter the wavelength, uh, the, if the wavelength is very short, then also the value here is very short. So this one should be actually quite small and this one should here be large. And uh, if this one is large, then the value will also become small here. So this means that um, essentially uh, none, nowhere do you see over here any um, reference uh, to the eyepiece, okay. So the resolution, the sharpness, the clarity of the image is determined uh, by the objective. Of course, that's theoretical because we also have to assume that um, there is, of course, also the objectives are manufactured in a proper way and there are no other defects and other things. Of course, I get all of that. Uh, but the point that I just want to make here is, is that there is a physical limit uh, there, which is uh, basically there is, uh, yeah, that's for diffraction limited devices. Uh, and uh, since 1873, this formula has been valid and so far it has not been uh, been uh, broken. Or <laughs> There have been now attempts to kind of go around the formula by using certain tricks. Uh, and as 
as a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, a Nobel Prize was awarded for this uh, technique. Uh, but generally, this uh, formula still stands as it is uh, today. So I'm going to just summarize the following. Um, it means if you want to have a high magnification and if you at the same time want to retain clarity, you have to go up uh, with the magnification of the objective, okay? Or at least go up with the numerical aperture of the objective. Um, and that is uh, the, the, the only way because uh, the eyepiece itself, well, uh, that is uh, not considered in the formula at all. And uh, if you add uh, a an highly magnifying eyepiece uh, like this one here, um, then it's gonna happen like this, that you're going to magnify beyond the resolution um, limit of, of the objective, okay? Yeah, sometimes it might be useful to magnify even if you do not get uh, see any further details for convenience reasons sometimes but yeah in any case uh, I think uh, for right now that should be it uh, and wish you all the best happy microbe hunting and uh, see you around next time bye bye